Healthcare swamped, public services disrupted and education at risk. COVID-19 overwhelms Hong Kong with a little respite on the horizon. And South Korea to roll out fourth COVID-19 shots by the end of the month. Millions of home test kits will also be distributed as infections soar. And Professor John Nichols, clinical professor in pathology at the University of Hong Kong, joins us live. Professor, let's uh, start with Hong Kong first. The city being overwhelmed by COVID-19. Has it been a scenario of its mm. own making? Well, it's been one which uh, everybody saw it was coming. Uh, we could only keep the virus out for so long. Uh, I think uh, that everybody didn't realize uh, just how fast it would go from just the beginning of December, just one or two infections, to where we're getting 1,000 and now 4,000 uh, probably tomorrow. But the situation is actually very similar to New Zealand, uh, which is also seeing a very similar uh, spike, is that uh, once you have the virus moving into the community, uh, it moves very, very, very fast. And Professor Nichols, we've had news out of South Korea about more COVID-19 doses, that they're introducing a fourth one. What do you make of this and how much will it yeah. actually help in boosting protection? Well, if you want to talk about vaccine inequality, and I think this is a prime example, you know, you've got countries talking about their fourth dose when there's places in the world uh, where you know, there are 30 countries in the world which don't even have uh, one, uh, 10 percent coverage, places like hi uh, Haiti and Chad, which have got less than one percent of a vaccination. So, uh, you know, I think this is an example of you know, the law of diminishing returns is that we're giving uh, vaccines to people uh, to which will have uh, not as much a benefit as if the vaccines were going into the arms of people who hadn't even got a first dose. But having said that, the argument is that, you know, it's been shown that the people who get the third dose uh, do get do tend to get a uh, reduced uh, severe disease, so people are going for the fourth dose. Um, but the the European Medicines Agency and I think Israel have been seeing well. Yes, it's actually not giving as much benefit as we would really like. There's a number of reasons for that. Is um, one of the reasons of being there's a thing called both immune senescence, where especially in the elderly, is that uh, they, they will not get as robust an, an immune response. And then uh, some people thinking that uh, the immune system will become a little bit worn out with uh, so many challenges. So it's, at this stage, I think uh, it would be more pragmatic uh, not to go for that fourth dose with the diminished benefit, uh, but, but at least stay with the third dose. Mm. Now, a variant specific uh, boosters are also in the works. And uh, does it mean that, yeah. you know, this boosting will need to continue indefinitely? Look, I think probably what we're going to be seeing is that, <clears throat> like with influenza, is that the benefit will be uh, probably once a year. Uh, you know, nobody really complains uh, that each year you need a influenza vaccination uh, because what we will we'll most likely see is, uh, is that probably year on year out is that there will be slight variations uh, in, the, in, the, in the coronaviruses and that we will need a, an annual vaccination. But I think anything more frequently than that, I think would be uh, probably uh, not, would, wouldn't be sort of, I think, justified or worthwhile. So, yeah, I think probably what you said is right, is that we, we will go towards uh, like an annual vaccination. So when you go for your flu shot, you'll probably go for your COVID shot as well. Professor Nichols, some countries uh, are moving forward with living with COVID-19, going endemic with yeah. this, and, and yet other countries like Sweden, they've all but declared the COVID-19 pandemic over. The health ministers, they're saying that COVID is no longer a danger to society. Do you think that stand is premature or, or appropriate? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, I checked now. What she actually said was that not, it's not over, but in terms of the changes and restrictions. And what, I mean, you're right is that she said is basically that when it's no longer a danger to society, then I think uh, then that was, you know, they say they can keep down and have no more of these restrictions. So it's not a, about the fact that they're going to get rid of the virus, but that the it will it's not as um, much that they need to have regular changes and regular restrictions on that. So I think that, um, that's what many countries are also now moving towards that. The US and the UK uh, are saying that they will be removing restrictions, are saying that the, the basically that the risk is uh, probably no greater than, for instance, from something like influenza. And that's probably uh, how people will then sort of 
regard being COVID as being no longer uh, a big threat uh, when it is sort of the mortality and the morbidity is probably equal to that of influenza. We've never got rid of influenza. It's always going to come back. And I think the same is we're never going to get rid of COVID or always, always come back. But I think we will be probably worked out. There will be like uh, influenza uh, each year. Well, it's, uh, it's great talking to you. Thank you for your time and thoughts, Professor John Nichols there from the University of Hong Kong.